Are you ready? Because we're going five pounds down every four weeks in 2022. And today we're gonna boost your burn with cardio and strength. So grab your dumbbells and let's go. All right, killer bees, let's go ahead and get your dumbbells completely out of the way and let's get moving and grooving with some arm circles with high knees. You guys, welcome to the workout. I'm Paula B. I'm your best middle-aged fitness friend. And around here, we are all about making peace with your menopausal body by finding a healthy weight and moving in ways that feel like self-love. And you know what really feels like self-love? Finding your healthy weight with the 5-0 method where every single day, we do five things that make you say, oh, I had no idea that I could lose weight like this after age 50. My friends, we are eating the right number of calories, which is not necessarily less than you were eating before. We are drinking the right amount of water, which is half your body weight in pounds in ounces of water. We are getting the right amount of sleep, which means we're gonna do some arm crossers with booty kickers. <laughs> And we're going to bed at the same time every night, getting up at the same time every morning and not stressing about how much in between that was actual sleep. My friends, we are exercising moderately every day with a workout like this. So much fun today. I can't wait for it. I'm gonna tell you all about it in a second. Because also, the fifth thing, we are managing our minds by finding our thoughts and deciding if they're helpful. And today, I have a helpful thought that's gonna challenge you. <laughs> it is my job as your fitness trainer and life coach to challenge you the exact, exact right amount. And I'm pretty sure that today's thought is gonna do that for you. Here's the thought. Everybody can do this. Now here's why this is a challenge. For me, when I thought this thought, I used it against myself instantly. <laughs> it did not feel helpful at all. Let's go ahead and do some welcome to my homes because welcome to Blossom's home. The thing about everybody can do this is it kind of feels like a challenge. It kind of feels like a taunt. And I would really like you to turn it around in your mind, if you can, if you can't. I mean, honestly, if it feels just terrible right from the get-go, my friends, ignore it, like, stop listening. I mean, I have other things to say, but really, if it does not feel helpful to you, it is not helpful to you, you can reject this thought out of hand because if it's not helpful for you, then it's not helpful. But here's why it's helpful for me. Because it reminds me that what I'm trying to do has been done before. Now here's the thing, I've got some cardio, some strength for us, we're going back and forth, I've got the handy dandy gym bus here set for intervals of 20 seconds. We're gonna do cardio for 20 seconds and then we're gonna rest for 20 seconds and then we're gonna do strength for 20 seconds and then we're gonna rest for 20 seconds. So it is, it is relentless in that we are going back and forth but we have plenty of time to like catch our breath, find where we are, figure out what's going on with us, do the last rep, whatever it takes. We're gonna get started with can-cans and everybody can do this. It's a knee and a kick and a knee and a kick and I know for some of you, you're already using that thought against yourself. I can't do this. This one is hard for me. These are can't, can'ts instead of can cans, my friend. Let me tell you why everybody can do this works so well for me when I feel like I'm in the middle of a struggle. Here's 20 seconds of rest and we're going to go ahead and grab those dumbbells. Coming up next, we're doing sumo squats. You are welcome to do sumo kicks. Have your feet nice and wide and just kick out to the side rather than squatting down. Or if you're okay with squats kind of in general, you don't have to go down very far. It does only depends on what you want to do with your body because every body can, if not do this exactly, do something like this. That's how I modify that thought for myself sometimes. It's not necessarily that everybody can do this exact thing, but everybody can do something that may be like this. And I know that sounds like it's parsing it out. Here's 20 seconds of rest. We're gonna put those dumbbells back down. Oh, Blossom, I'm gonna put them over here this time so it's not right in your face. Sorry, sweetheart. Coming up next, we're doing low swinging high knees. So, hands are swinging low while one high knee comes up at a time. I like to get my hands out of the way of the knee. Sometimes my body does that. Sometimes my body doesn't do that. <laughs> and it's, that's the thing, everybody, can do this, but maybe I'm doing it a little bit differently. Maybe I'm doing it my way. Maybe I'm modifying. Maybe I'm making it work for me. Maybe I'm going faster. Maybe I'm going slower. But everybody can do this. I like to remind myself, here's 20 seconds of rest. Coming up next, we're doing peekaboos. Gonna grab those dumbbells. I like to remind myself because sometimes, sometimes my brain will offer me really automatically that I can't do something, that I just can't, that it's, I, I'm incapable. And the fact is, you're capable of doing, I'm gonna say anything within the space of, you know, 
the confines of physics and here we go with peekaboos <laughs> within the confines of like physics and space and time and biology and chemistry and everything like you might not be able to do something the exact way you want to do it you might not be able to lose you know 50 pounds tomorrow but you can lose weight you can lift weights Go ahead and put those weights down. Speaking of that, we got 20 seconds of rest. We're coming back to cardio. We're doing rainbow jacks. And I really specifically, I did choose kind of, for me personally, mentally difficult exercises today to prove this exact point about everybody can do this. Rainbow jacks, hands going up overhead. It's almost, it's almost like rainbow frogs <laughs> because our legs are doing that one knee thing up and our hands are making a rainbow up overhead. <laughs> You can call these whatever you want. I think I'm gonna slowly transition though <laughs> to calling them rainbow frogs because I absolutely love that mental imagery. Okay, here's 20 seconds of rest. And I know that some of you at this point during the workout, you're like, oh, I'm actually gonna do cardio longer or I'm actually gonna do strength longer. I want you to know that you can <laughs> do that. <laughs> because you are capable. One of you, again, we're doing X marks this spot. I actually only meant to grab one dumbbell. We're gonna literally make the letter X right in front of us. Core is pulled in nice and tight. We're chopping from the one shoulder down to the opposite hip, and then one shoulder down to the other opposite hip. We are squeezing our abs. We are thinking, this is actually a pretty dynamic strength move where we're moving quickly, but we're squeezing our abs the entire time. I know this looks like an arm exercise, and it kind of is, but you're actually toning your abs. Go ahead and put that dumbbell down. or or keep doing the exercise. <laughs> I see you. <laughs> and it peeps again. We're doing swooshing skiers. We're making an infinity sign with our hands while our feet, kind of just doing booty kickers, honestly. So here's the thing about you can do this. You are capable of doing, again, anything. Truly, anything you set your brain to, you can do it. And I love to remind myself of that because sometimes when I think I can't, that just closes all doors. I don't even try and figure out how I might do something similar to it, how I might do something close to it, how I might be able to do something that I want to do that's kind of getting me there a little bit, sort of. When I remind myself that I can, it opens up my mind to the possibilities. When it beeps again, we're doing bent over rows. Go ahead and grab both of those dumbbells. We're gonna think about having our core pulled in nice and tight. Your back is gonna be nice and straight. Feet about hip width apart, or maybe a little bit further apart. You're gonna bend forward slightly, and we're gonna row those dumbbells right up to your armpits. Really keeping your elbows facing back, whatever's behind you. For me, it's the closet over there. Having your elbows back reminds you that you are using those big muscles in your back to pull the weights up to your armpits. Here's the thing about you can do this or anything that you want. When it beeps again, we're doing windmill tap backs. Hands are wide, feet are wide, opposite hand down towards the opposite something, knee, shin, ankle, foot, ground, if you are that flexible, I'm not. Generally speaking, I hit just about my knee area while we're tapping back <laughs> with the other side. Having your hands kind of up while we are moving quickly from side to side is what gets your heart rate up for this one. And when it beeps again, of course, we're gonna get 20 seconds of rest. I was about to tell you the next exercise, but I don't need to. <laughs> My friends, the thing about you can do this, or you can do more, or you can do less. You can do anything. Go ahead and grab your dumbbells. Coming up next, we're doing reverse lunges. You don't want to do a reverse lunge? Totally okay. You can do a reverse kick. Kicking backwards throws you just as far off balance and frankly, uses the exact same booty and hamstring muscles as doing a reverse lunge. You can also just step back. You don't really have to come down to a full lunge if you don't want to. Totally up to you how much or how little you want to do that works with you, that works with your fitness, that helps you get a great workout that doesn't leave you sore. <laughs> I can't look over my shoulder <laughs> so that you can come back and exercise again tomorrow. Oh my goodness. The thing about doing what you want to do, you can, but what I'll have you do is pay attention to your results. When it beeps again, we are doing pretzel jacks, which means that our hands are doing jumping jacks and our feet are doing pretzels. <laughs> mean that you're bringing one foot up to its opposite like knee on the other side, knee, thigh, shin, something like that. The point is that you're actually turning that knee out a little bit 
because that's what feels like toning back there in your booty while we're doing cardio, my friends. No matter what we are doing, cardio, strength, resting, balance work, we're always improving something. Kind of amazing when you think about it like that. Go ahead and grab your dumbbells. Coming up next, we're doing letter X's. Have your core pulled in nice and tight. We're gonna make the top half of the letter X and then the bottom half of the letter X. Hello, sweetheart. Here's the thing about doing more. For example, if you are working through these rest intervals, like I know some of you are, if you are working through the rest intervals, pay attention to your results. And I mean results over time. Because some of you might be like, I feel great right now. This was amazing. I got tons of endorphins. It was perfect. And then tomorrow you're a little bit sore. And then tomorrow you exercise again because we exercise every single day. And then the day after that, you're still a little bit sore. You're still kind of a little bit puffy. You're still not quite feeling great. Here's 20 seconds of rest. Where should I put these, sweetheart? Okay, now I'm gonna put these on this side. I know, I love you, sweetie pie. 20 seconds of rest and then coming up next, we're doing kick jacks. It's exactly what it sounds like. Arms are doing jumping jacks, feet are kicking. The thing about results, really specifically exercise results, and honestly, even like eating results, you can do whatever you want. Results will show up over time. When you overexercise, and I don't even mean like, like crazy overexercise, I just mean overexercise for what your body can handle. For some of us, this is overexercising. Like literally, what I'm doing right now might be overexercising for you. For some of us, this might be just right here. 20 seconds of rest. You don't know what overexercising is until you look at your results over time. Coming up next, we're doing cross body crunches. So we're gonna have the weights in our hands, hands up here at our shoulders, elbows out nice and wide. You're gonna reach your opposite elbow towards, oh, your opposite knee right there in the middle. And yes, the groaning is completely optional, but you're welcome to it. <laughs> And this one we are really crunching down into it. Sometimes I have you bring your knee up so high that we're not crunching forward, but this one really is crunching from both directions. Knee up, elbow down, crossing your body, really thinking about squeezing your abs, trying very hard not to fall over on this one. It's a little bit difficult for me. I am gonna finish up that last, that last rep on that last side, then I'm gonna put my dumbbells down. And then we're coming back to cardio, coming up next. This, there's, oh, did I mention that there's no repeat today? By the way, we're not repeating any of this, which is why my whiteboard is so crammed full. We're doing disco dancers. Get your disco fingers out, we're reaching up while tapping down on the other side, out to the side. <laughs> it's nice and wide, using those abs and obliques even while we are doing cardio. My friends, if you've got your core pulled in, you are working your core. And we're working our heart and lungs with this as well. When it beeps, we got 20 seconds of rest before we move back to strength. Now I know, I know, for some of you, grab your dumbbells. All of you grab your dumbbells if you'd like to, but, but for some of you, it's like, this isn't a very high heart rate workout, Paula. I'm not feeling like we're getting very much out of this. When it beeps again, we're doing curtsy press-ups. You do not have to come down on a curtsy lunge. You, are welcome, lunge. you are welcome to just kick out to the side, or you can just step back. You don't have to come down very far. As you step back, you either come down far as you want to or not, but we're gonna press up with the opposite hand, and I'm gonna try really hard not to kick the chair or the glass cabinet. I'm always kicking something. <laughs> It's not a big room, so I'm always kicking something. <laughs> my friends, oh my gosh, you, everybody can do this. Everybody, even in a small space, can do this kind of work. And here's what I was saying about not being very sweaty. Okay, oh my gosh, here's a new one. You guys, we're doing golf swings. I don't play golf. <laughs> we're gonna put our hands together. We're going to swing while we're stepping back, and then swing the other way. Swing and swing, swing and swing. It's kind of like a curtsy lunge, except that we're not doing a curtsy lunge. We really are stepping back, having your hands together. Oh my gosh, do you feel that work in your abs and your sides while we're doing cardio? And of course, having your hands swinging up really high brings your heart rate up too. It's, ah, whew, that was just right at 20 seconds. <laughs> Am I right? Here's the thing about sweat. Sweat is not the best indicator of what your workout is getting for you. When it beeps again, we're doing wide open high knees. Elbows are wide, hands are right here about shoulder height, elbows are shoulder height also. We're gonna open up our hands while we bring up one high knee. Being sore after a workout, being sweaty during a workout, neither one of those is a guarantee that the workout is doing what you want it to be doing. What you personally want your workout to be doing, if, I mean, if you are here to lose weight, you want your workout to just simply be a nice expression of what your body can do, honestly. 20 seconds of rest while we put that down. 
Working out does not make you lose weight. Eating the right number of calories consistently over time is how we lose weight. If you are here to gain fitness, when it beeps again, we're doing booty kicker jacks, just what it sounds like. Hands are doing jumping jacks, lower body is doing booty kickers. That's gonna get your heart rate up as well. Here we go with it. When, when you are exercising consistently over time, and for me personally, the only way that I can exercise consistently over time is to keep it pretty moderate, keep it pretty mild, keep it pretty easy so that I'm not sore, so that I'm not stiff, so that I'm not achy, so that I'm not feeling like I've got to take a day off tomorrow. Because sometimes when I take a day off, I take two days off. And sometimes when I take two days off, I take three days off. Not me personally. I actually have been doing this for years, so I am a professional. Coming up next, we're doing side bends. I always do something, but sometimes my something is pretty, pretty mild, pretty mellow, pretty not much. When you want any kind of results, here's side bends. Our hips are staying nice and sturdy. Core is pulled in nice and tight. We're literally just bending to wherever your spine can take you. It's probably not very far. If you were to jut your hip out, you could go way farther. It would be much more about flexibility and strength in your hip. This is only strength in your abs and obliques. It's very different. Okay, dumbbells down. When we are exercising moderately, we can get every result we want. Coming up next, bug slappers. <laughs> okay, so we're starting off, feet together, hands out wide. Your opposite hand is gonna reach towards your opposite stepping out foot. So your foot is stepping out while your hand is reaching down towards it as though you are slapping a bug off your shin. You're not, I hope. You might be, but I hope you're not. If you are, you could probably use a little bit more force than I am. And honestly, you're probably gonna not wanna be moving your legs. It would look very different if you were actually slapping a bug. But hey, speaking of bugs, coming up next, we're going to do bent over flies. So you're going to grab those dumbbells again. You're going to pull in your core. You're going to have your feet about hip width apart. It's almost exactly like our other bent over exercise. As we are bent over, you're really thinking about pushing your booty back. Having your core pulled in will keep your back nice and straight. Your palms are facing each other. As your palms come up, they'll be facing the ground more or less. Really thinking about not shrugging your shoulders up but rather squeezing from your shoulder blades in your back in order to raise your arms out to the side. If your back is not used to this kind of work, your hands might not come up as far as mine. Don't be so concerned about getting your hands up so much as simply squeezing from your back so that you're using excellent form. Go ahead and put your dumbbells down, you guys. We are getting really low on my list. Coming up next, we're doing papa squats, which is not father squats, it's pop a squat and you do not have to squat down very far. This is like a little, it's like a little squatito. It's just like a little papa squat and then hands go up. Little squat, little push your hips back and then hands go up. Hips go back, hands go up. Hips go back, hands go up. <laughs> this is one of my favorite exercises. It just feels silly every time I do it. And I don't know why, well no, I do know why because it's got a silly name and it just feels fun. It's a very like momentum based kind of exercise and I enjoy those. Okay, 20 seconds of rest coming up next. Deadlifts, one of my absolute favorite exercises in the entire world. Core is pulled in nice and tight. You notice that I say that every time. I actually could be saying that even for our cardio exercises. Truly, having your core pulled in is the way to get the most out of every workout we do. Push your hips back wherever they can get to. Pull your hips forward until they're right underneath your shoulders again. Really thinking about your hips driving this motion. Yeah, your torso is absolutely gonna come forward, but it's only coming forward because your hips are going back, not because you are leaning forward into it. When your hips are driving the motion, your hips, your butt, really specifically, is getting all the benefit. When you are bending over into it, your lower back is doing all the work. When it beeps again, we are doing swimming frogs. Okay, so we're gonna start with our hands up. Elbows are gonna stay out really wide. We're bringing up one knee out to the side at a time on each side. Here we go. So women with those frogs. <laughs> I love how many, I was thinking about this, about how many like, not really sports references, but kind of sports references we have today. I mean, truly, Can Cans is like a dancing reference, and then we had the golf swings and now these swimming frogs. I want you to know, I don't dance, I don't golf, and I don't swim. <laughs> All I do is this, and I do run. <laughs> so here's 20 seconds of rest. We're gonna grab those dumbbells coming up next. We are doing front raise, side raise. Oh my gosh, I love this one. I remember when I made up this exercise, this was like, this was like such a revelation to me that you don't have to be doing the same thing on both sides of your body and that actually makes it like 
even more difficult because your brain really has to get involved with this motion as well. Front raise, side raise. Awesome job, really having your core pulled in nice and tight. Thinking about where your body is in space and time. We're not getting a ton of these done. And again, I tell you, we do not have to go harder, faster, better, or more. Go ahead and put those dumbbells down. What we have to do is be consistent. Everybody can do that, right? <laughs> again, you guys, we are doing push, push, crunch. And this is our final exercise. It's not really a circuit. I don't know what to call it when I say this is our final exercise, but it is just our final exercise. We're pushing, pushing, and then we're crunching. So it's a push and a push and a swoop over and a little crunch on the other side. This is an awkward exercise, as so many of them are, and every body can do this or some approximation of it. Whatever you are doing is the thing that you are doing. You can do something like this. Okay, here's 20 seconds of rest, and then you guys, of course I have one final thing for us. You knew that, maybe you didn't. Hi, I'm Paula, I have a finisher. <laughs> it's slightly more difficult because it's balance. And especially with this moderately high heart rate, this is gonna feel tough. Here's what we're doing. We're doing super slow, oh, I'm gonna have my dumbbells. We're gonna do super slow tree pose jacks. So hands up overhead, starting with my left foot only. Hands are doing a very, very slow jumping jack, palms facing out. Just the one foot coming up. We're gonna do two intervals, no rest in between. Oh my goodness, really feeling that work. Here we go on the other side. Foot is coming up, just like I did for those pretzel jacks, to the opposite knee-ish area. It does not matter if you get to your knee. If you're down at your ankle, down at your shin, just barely tapping your foot, whatever works for you is exactly what works for you, my friends. Results come over time. That was awesome. Put your dumbbells down. Turn your timer off. Give yourself, not a hug yet, not hugging ourselves yet. We're gonna do some arm circles first. Because <laughs> everybody can do this. That was a good one, right? How do you feel about that helpful thought? The reason I challenged you with that, the reason I challenged us with, honestly, with all of these exercises, with lengthy rest periods, this was a challenging workout, right? Mentally, physically, spiritually, <laughs> like all of the above. It's my job, my friends. That is my job to push you a little outside your comfort zone. And sometimes pushing you outside your comfort zone actually means doing less. It means turning something over in your mind that maybe doesn't feel quite right at first, that you can figure out for yourself. You can, everybody can do this. Let's open it up. Doesn't it feel nice to think of yourself as capable? Give yourself a hug and a pat on your back because you can do this. Whatever this is, lose weight, get fit, get strong, get through whatever challenging thing is going on in your life right now. You could do this. You can. And it feels really good to know that, right? You guys, thank you so much. Every time we work out together, I am grateful for it. Thank you for working out with me. Make sure before you go, that first of all, you see what else is on the screen here because I always have something else for you to click on next if you'd like to, <laughs> like a longer cool down or the information video about how we lose weight. I've, I've always got something else for you and I never mention it, but please, if you'd like to click on those, but also click on that subscribe button and I'll see you tomorrow.